Hello, everyone. This is Niao Niao. Welcome to the second season of Old Wisdom, New Insights. In this season of the show, we take you to different places in China with a historical significance and show you the beauty of modern-day China. Right now, I'm in Zigui County of Hubei Province, the birthplace of Qu Yuan, our patriotic poet. If you've been watching the live stream with us for these past Several days, you might already know that he was this very important government official as well as poet living in the ancient state of Chu during China's Warring States period of time. He lived over 2,200 years ago. Yet his work, his life story, as well as his thoughts are still very influential to today's Chinese. Which is why we pick this location to do our live stream today. That is Qu Yuan Si, the memorial. Royal Hall of Qu Yuan, Qu Yuan Si. This place was actually built、um, as early as the Tang Dynasty. During that time, people view him as this very important figure already, and they built this memorial hall. Si in Chinese, Si carries the meaning of temple. It also carries the meaning of a memorial hall. So Qu Yuan Si. Right down under that, you can see Guang Zheng Ri Yue. It's also an expression、um, that showcases the importance of Qu Yuan. Guang means light, Zheng means compare or compete with, and Ri Yue is sun and moon. Ri. The sun and Yue, the moon. Guang Zheng Ri Yue suggests that Qu Yuan's virtue, his importance, his value shine as bright as the sunlight and the moonlight. Guang Zheng Ri Yue. So from only the gate of the mountain, we call it Shenmen here. Shenmen from the gate of the memorial hall, you get to see how important he. Was he continues to be, and he probably will be for Chinese people. So for today, let's learn about Qu Yuan, about his life story, and about the important virtues we still want to carry on, pass on to our generation as well as future generations. So let's go. In the meantime, let me say hello to some of you. We have Jesse with us. Uh, Huziana saying hi, hello to you too. Rina, hello, and Bina Ray, hi. We have、um, Lao Man, hello to you, and、uh, Fifita saying good afternoon from New Zealand. Wow, happy to see you too. And we have Lao Man saying good morning, morning to you. Ah, we have Ruben saying hi, Niu Niu. I am watching you from Argentina. Thank you for your teachings. Thank you for being with us. And Jesse saying, I hope you enjoyed the Dragon Boat Festival, Niu Niu, and learn Chinese、um, mediator. Wow,、um, moderator. Excuse me. Yes.、Uh, as you can see, we've already here in the entrance of Qu Yuan's Memorial Hall, and、uh, yes, here we are with. Our special guest here. I invited a special guest, and、uh, she is going to be with me during this live stream. She is working here in the Memorial Hall of Qu Yuan, and she would be able to answer many of your questions if you have anything you want to ask about our patriotic poet. So, 你好，你好，你好，你好，你好。呃，您能先给我们做个自我介绍吗？我就 introduce yourself a little bit. 哎，好的。大家好，我是紫归县博物馆的工作人员，叫付军，一个土生土长的紫归人。<laughs> so you're from Zigui, you're a local. She is a local here, and she works with the cultural lyrics as well as the important cultural background about Qu Yuan as well as about Zigui County. So she's going to be with us, be our very special guest, and explain to us the stories about Qu Yuan. 非常感谢您今天参加我们的直播，那么往里走。Okay, let's go. So when we start getting here, you can see that there is already a very up high stairs. Let's check it out. I don't understand why would you build a memorial hall along the mountain, and how could it be so hard to climb? I find it hard to catch my breath already. So, uh, Fu 老师，我想问您一下，我们这个居然此为什么是要依山而建啊？感觉很难走的样子。
呃，屈原他的一生是很艰辛的，被楚怀王流放过两次，所以我们特别把这个台阶修得很高，然后让大家感验、体受、体验一下呃，屈原他的一生的艰辛。<笑><笑> okay, as you can see, the stairs are actually very up high, and the reason that we got them, or let's say, uh, build the memorial hall on the mountain is not only because the memorial hall is actually built in a very beautiful place. It's along the mountain and against the beautiful three gorges. 在三峡的对面 making it very pretty. But also, you wanted to learn about Qu Yuan's story. You wanted to learn about his journey, being exiled, being banished to different places. Even though he's been this really great official whose idea and strategy was totally correct, if The state of Chu had followed his strategy. Perhaps he's going to be the one, or Chu, the state of Chu, would be the one who unifies China. But as we know, according to history, it was the state of Qin that unified the vast land of China for the first time, for the kind of area that we know of. So,、uh, for Chu Yuan, he was sad about the situation, but he couldn't really do anything about it, making him a not very successful government of. Official, but his love and his strategy for the country was so pure. That is why we love him so much. We are going to learn about Qu Yuan's story, and I think the first key word we know here would be that he loved his country. He's a patriotic man, yet his life was full of struggles, and he didn't really got the happy ending. So. 一生流放 would be a label we would put on him. 一生 would be one life. 流放 living in exile, living in exile. 流放流放 Yes, and、uh, apparently we are going to go all these upstairs and making it a little bit have the hardship, taste a tiny bit of the hardship of Chu Yuan's life as well. But I think I saw an important, more interesting little shop here. Since we are here in this、uh, tourist destination, it is now a tourist destination, and we can see that here this is a little shop full of souvenirs. You can get some, and most importantly, this is also the items of a、um, provincial level intangible cultural heritage items. Let's go and check it out. Ah, we have already got a lot of comments from our friends here. Yi Li Zhong saying hello. Thank you for the interesting live stream. You are very welcome. Very happy to have you here with us. And we have Vivian here. Vivian, hi. Very happy to have you. And Jeff is here. Jeff has. Share the, the live stream. Thank you. If you like the live stream, please like and share and comment as much as possible. It helps us a lot, and it helps other fellow Chinese learners to be with us. And、uh, 喜欢杨布 saying good morning. 端午节安康 have a safe and sound 端午 festival. Thank you. You too. We have Lao Man. Watching from Sakim, this is a beautiful place. I agree, this is really lovely. And the Finso saying watching from Bhutan, woo, cool. And、uh, started learning Chinese for a while from Gaul. Hopefully, you can gain some more progress from our live stream. Julio, hello. Saying hello from Mexico. Hello to you too. How's Mexico? Let me know what's the weather in your places because it's. Scorching hot in here. We, I am、um, having a little bit of sweat, and my camera crew, our lovely colleagues, I can see right in front of me. Their sweats are just pouring down. It's like they're having a shower. <laughs> so it's really, really hot. And、um, oh, by the way, let's share a Chinese expression. Han ru yu xia. Han is your sweat. Ru is like. Yu would be rain, and xia is down. So someone is sweating like it is raining. Han ru yu xia. Uh, okay. Also, I see 喜欢杨布 saying Qing Dynasty. Actually, we were talking about Qing Dynasty, Qin, 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 Chao, Qin Dynasty. So Qin was around 2,000 years ago, and it is considered the first dynasty, the first period of time where the current Chinese. Area, the land of China as we know of, the approximate land as we know of, has 
been first unified. Of course, after that, we experienced a little bit of separating and unified again, but mainly unified. And that's why there's the Chinese saying, 分久必合，合久必分 So 分 means to separate, 合 means to unify. And 分久必合，合久必分 means if we've been unified for a long time, it is the trend to get separated a little bit. But if we've been separated for a while, we are destined to get unified. So things change, as Chinese saying. So during the state of Qin, there was before Qin unified the entire area. Of the China we familiar we're familiar with,、um, it, there was the seven different states that were considered rather powerful.、Uh, these states compete with each other, try to annex each other, so that the land can be unified. So that was the 2,000 year ago history. And for our patriotic poet Chu Yuan, he lived in the state of Chu, the ancient state of Chu, where Actually, their state, or his state, was very powerful as well, but it was not the final winner. And we're going to ta- tell that story a bit later. Right here, you can see all these beautiful、uh, sculptures. 小的根雕根 means the root, the root of a, let's say,、um, a tree, a trunk, and、uh, 根雕 is another item of. What we call 非物质文化遗产 Do you remember 非物质文化遗产 These items here, and if you take a closer look, you might see that these ones are the award-winning sculptures. 这些呢都是获奖作品啊，获奖 award-winning, award-winning, 获奖 For this person, as the inheritor of the provincial intangible cultural heritage items, he. Is specialized in making these sculptures on the wood root. For example, this shoe and these ones, the texture are really specific, 非常的精巧精巧 Moving on a little bit. All these ones, very interesting. And of course, since we are in Zigui, we are talking about Qu Yuan. Of course, there would be some sculptures of Qu Yuan as well. See, this one is. You can see my hand here. It's really tiny. It's a tiny sculpture. Yet his facial expression is very vivid, and the clothing、um, fabric. I think I can see the detail of the fabric. Very beautiful. Qu Yuan 可以看到他的衣服的细节都非常的清楚啊，很漂亮的小跟雕 Very beautiful little sculptures. These ones as well. So yes,、uh, that's the beauty of traveling in Chinese tourist destinations. Some people would say that somehow, in a way, these tourist destinations are a little bit commercialized. But I think for Qu Yuan Si, the Memorial Hall of Qu Yuan here, is just the right amount. This one is the only one I saw, and in this little shop, of course, you get to have a little bit of. Let's say items and souvenirs you can take back, and also you get to, for example, buy a book of Qu Yuan, a little brochure, learn about the Qu Yuan story, and something you can take home as、um, something to remember this place by. So very interesting. 喜欢杨木森，谢谢跟大家分享历史和中文课。Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being with us. Uh, that shoe looks like a modern one. It is a modern shoe. It is, let's say, created by the inheritor here, and、um, he has won many prizes, many awards because of his beautiful technique. And William saying greetings from San Francisco, California. We love you, China. Thank you, China. Thanks you. Whoa, I am on behalf of China. That's cool. Thank you very much for being with us, and thank you for taking an interest into the lives of Qu Yuan, into Chinese history. I think history can be something very important. I get that for some people, since not many countries have a long history as long as thousands of years, but for Chinese people, the route is actually significant. For example. 
Even though we say Xu Yuan lived over 2,000 years ago, there is this holiday commemorating him, and many of his sayings are still used in modern-day Chinese language. So, actually, it is、um, something we can all learn from. So, let's go. Onto the stairs and go up to learn about his story as well as his expressions that we're still using today. The hardship of Chu Yuan living in exile. Oh, I can feel a little bit. It's really hot. 真的很热哎，今天。Oh, Vivian saying I like the very detail of the sculpture. Yeah, right. It's so vivid to the point that. I am stunned. <coughs> This is absolutely amazing. Like I was saying, some of Chu Yuan's sayings are still. Being、uh, used and being captured in today's language, not only the poems that are very beautiful and、uh, very poetic, but also the everyday sayings. For example, there is a Chinese saying, "Shi you so short, cun you so long." This is now a kind of a Chinese idiom, a term that we're still using, and it is said by Qu Yuan. This saying basically means because "chu," you can understand it as a Chinese version of a foot, so a、uh, measurement for length, and "cun," you can understand it as a Chinese version of inch. And "chu you so short" means "short" is short and "long" is long. So "chu you so short" means the foot would have something short, and "cun you so long" "cun" is an inch would have something long. And you might think it's in, it's not logical, but actually "chu you so short" "cun you so long" is trying to express the idea that for something. Considered not that long, it has its advantages. And for the things that are considered long, it would have its disadvantages. So it's saying for each and every individual, there it has advantages and disadvantages. It has strengths and weaknesses. So 尺有所短，寸有所长 I was surprised when I first learned that this was said by Qu Yuan, because we use it in modern-day Chinese all the time. We say it all the time. Yet it was created over 2,000 years ago. Isn't that amazing? Ah.、Uh, <laughs> in the meantime, we see Jesse saying, "Please do not get too hot, Niu Niu. Please drink some water if needed. Niu Niu, 多喝点水，不要太热 Thank you. That's very sweet of you. You're so nice. You are the backbone of my live streams." <laughs> And Yu Li Zhong saying there are many stairs there. Like I said, many stairs showcasing the hardship of Qu Yuan's life. If the first label of Qu Yuan we put as in 一生流放 then I think the second and perhaps to me most important fig.、Uh, Let's say feature of him would be 诗人诗人 a poet 诗人 He is considered the first. Poet in Chinese history, not because he was actually the first poet, but rather because his name was first recorded as a poet. So he created the style of writing, so style of writing, so so um. Sao Ti, Sao Ti, the Sao style of writing, and before that, it was Shi Jing. If you have heard of it, the classic of songs, Shi Jing, that was the first. Um, anthology in Chinese history and Chu Ci, the songs of Chu, would be the second. And for Shi Jing, since there were no specific author recorded, so Chu Ci would be the first book of songs with the author's name recorded, and that author is Qu Yuan. So when we say Qu Yuan was the first poet in China, we meant that he was the first recorded poet, and that is absolutely something we should know here. In China, as a Chinese, and now you know. If anyone asks you who is the first poet in China, you can say, "Some people has done has made some poems. We don't know who they are, but the first recorded poet would be Qu Yuan. Qu Yuan is the first recorded poet. 
名字有名字的诗人。诗人 would be his second label. Okay, I think we are now walking towards the. A primary hall of the memorial hall. We're now entering the main hall. We can see on top there is "Tian Di Tong Shou." Tian Di Tong Shou. This is also a verse from Qu Yuan's poem. So、uh, many different verses we're still quoting nowadays. And Tian Di Tong Shou. Basically means Tian is the heaven or the sky, and Di is the land, the soil or the ground. Tong same, Shou is the longevity, so live as long as the heaven and earth. Okay, let's go inside and check it out a little bit. Here we can see that、um, the tradition of having. A memorial hall here in China. You can, you should have more than one exhibition hall. It's not like a modern museum because in modern museums, most occasions you would have different exhibition hall one after another. But in China, especially in traditional Chinese culture in ancient China, one it is a memorial hall. It serves the purpose of a museum. Its function is like a museum, a museum, a museum, a museum. But its structures, its、uh, architecture, the building component, the building compound would be much more magnificent and also with a aesthetic、uh, value. So we often have a primary hall, Xian Dian. There would also be a main hall, 正殿正殿 and also there would be some halls on the side, 偏殿偏殿 and these、um, exhibition halls on the side would also exhibit or showcase some different kind of articles. And here in 前殿 we have this 前言 this preview talking about the.、Um, History of this memorial hall. Like I was saying, in the very beginning, the memorial hall was actually constructed during Tang Dynasty, so quite a long time ago already for us. And it has been changed and、uh, redecorated and reconstructed for many times. Actually, three, well, two times. So here we get to see the miniatures of different of them in different times of the memorial hall in different times. We can see that in the very beginning, it's rather plain. 相对而言比较简单啊，简单 This is during the Qing Dynasty because early on there.、Are, uh, I think if we go a little bit back in time, it'll be even more simple. But this is the first version. Qing Dai, Qing Dai, the Qing Dynasty, Qing Dynasty. So Qing and Qin. Two different dynasties. Qing Dai. This is rather simple. And then we have this a little bit complicated one. You've already got the Shen Men, the mountain gate, and the、uh, Pian Dian. Like I was saying, the side halls, the whole、uh, halls on the side, and、uh, the main hall, main hall, main hall in the back. So it's a little bit like a courtyard. It's a little bit like a yard, and you have Qu Yuan sculpture in the middle. Qu Yuan's 雕像呢在最中间，有点像一个四合院的形式 At the very back, you would have the main hall. In the main hall, there are the major,、um, let's say, exhibitions. And tada! This is. The one we are in right now, as you can see, it's much more complicated, 复杂了很多 and more beautiful with the trees and everything decoration. And、uh, we are in the middle, the middle one, 正殿我们现在在正呃我们现在在前殿啊前殿大家可以看到就是山门后面的这个殿前殿前 means front, front 中间这个 front 前殿 is a hall. 我们现在在前殿 We are right now in the main hall. Main hall. 一会儿我们会一路走上去 A bit later, we're going to walk up. Ah,、oh, I'm still out of breath a little bit. Okay, and、uh, I see. 喜欢杨步 saying 屈原 Yes, that is our main character. Sam saying best of 牛牛 is still yet to come. <laughs> I'm eagerly waiting for that. Oh, thank you. And、um, 
We see if you guys have any questions. Oh yes, 持有所短，寸有所长 Something that we're still using in today's Chinese. 现代汉语还在用这个句子，持有所短，寸有所长 Okay, so we've already covered two very important features of 屈原 Actually, another one would be he is. The father, the founding father of romanticism here in China, 他呢是中国浪漫主义的创始人。浪漫 romantic, 浪漫 romantic, romantic, and 浪漫主义 would be romanticism. 浪漫主义，浪漫主义 romanticism. 浪漫主义 He is someone who's very romantic. He in his poems he use a lot of metaphors. His imagination is beyond the limit. He would be able to、um, compare different things into the objects in nature and give them the best image you can think of. For example, his major, let's say, symbol、uh, symbolizing item was Xiang Tao Mei Ren. We say Xiang Tao Mei Ren. Xiang Tao means beautiful herbs with a good fragrance. And Mei Ren is beautiful people. Beautiful people. He would compare man's virtue as the fragrant herbs. The very good smelling herbs would be your virtue. So when he is saying that I hang all these lovely herbs on myself, he's actually saying I am attached to all these good virtue to my personality. And he would compare someone with good virtue, with inner and outside beauty, as a Mei Ren, Mei Ren, beautiful woman, beautiful woman, Mei Ren. So when he is talking about the great smelling herbs as well as the beautiful women, he's not actually saying that. He's just being romantic, comparing the virtue of a scholar, a Decent man, a great people, as Xiang Tao Mei Ren. So we say Xiang Tao Mei Ren is his most important idea. It's his shoulder. It's him that first created this idea. And actually, there are many different poems in,、uh, or let's say works and verses in his poem. For example, there is this one: "Wei Tao Mu Zhi Ling Luo Xi, Kong Mei Ren Zhi Chi Mu." This is a great example showcasing his Xiang Tao. Idea. So, Tao Mu would be the herbs. Ling Luo is、uh, talking about the leaves falling off, and、uh, Mei Ren we know is the beautiful woman. Chi Mu is getting a little older and older every day. So, together it means days and months speed past. They did not long linger. Spring times and autumns altered in turn. That's the previous verse. And I thought on things growing on the fall of their leaves, and feared for the fairest, her drawing toward dark. So he's saying that I am afraid of the leaves falling down, and I am afraid of the beautiful woman getting aged. But again, that's we talked about this. Romanticism, 浪漫主义 What he's really saying is that I feared that the good virtues and the great people would not last long enough. And so the third label we can think of would be 浪漫浪漫 romantic 浪漫 His way of expressing himself, his way of telling the stories are actually very romantic. The father of romanticism here in China. And here we see this is another、uh, demonstration of his work. 九歌九歌 is literally nine songs, but there are eleven articles, eleven songs in this series of,、um, let's say, work. In this series, he's actually giving some ceremonial chanting words, very interesting ideas and different stories. In his poems, he created different. Let's say God or supernaturals. For example, Dong Huang Tai Yi. Dong Huang Tai Yi. That's the major god. And Yun Zhong Jun. Another one. These are、uh, the, let's say, hero or main character in some of his works. And Xiang Furen is a very beautiful woman. He used many different expressions to. Speak about the beauty of this lady, and those expressions nowadays are very often cited to 
describe the beauty of a lady, and we have 大司命，大司命 If you take a look at this picture, you would see this man looked rather aged because 大司命司 in ancient Chinese means to be in charge with, be in charge with. So 大司命 the major being charged with 命 life. So he is in charge of longevity, especially the lives of elder generations. 大司命，大司命 And we have 少司命，少司命，少 is younger. So 少司命 is in charge of the younger generation, the longevity and the well-being of the younger people. 少司命 And also,、uh, right beside 少司命 you can see this little kid with him because you know he's in charge of his,、um, let's say, life. 少司命啊 And also we have Dong Jun. Dong Jun, I think he's in charge of、um, clouds, and also He Bo. He Bo is in charge of the river He Bo. And all these people, all these figures I mentioned, they are the characters or they are the main heroes of his series of work, Jiu Ge, a chanting lyrics for a sacrifice. Ceremony, 九歌 It is also done very beautifully. All right,、uh, let's continue to move and see if there are anything you guys want to say. Oh, 楚辞 Yes, 楚辞楚辞 is the songs of 楚 and it is the second anthology recorded in Chinese literary history because 诗经 would be considered the first one and 楚辞 is the second one. For 楚辞 something distinct was that. Chu and changed the、um, typical four verses structure, making it much more liberal in expression. It is still, of course, rhyme. It still rhymes, but it's no longer、um, the length of the sentences are no longer unified, so that you can have really long sentences as well as the short ones, making it a little bit more liberal and more beautiful. We say 更加自由啊，更加自由，更加自由 ，a little bit more liberal. And、um, ah, Dian, such a difficult character to write, so many strokes. Yes, I agree. That is a little bit hard. But if you can remember that one, perhaps it will be.、Um, let's say we say in Chinese, if you remember around 300 Chinese. Characters, it will be easy for you to start learning the other ones. Okay, I'm still walking up. You guys are saying, please take a deep breath because this is really, whew, a lot of stairs. The hardships of Qu Yuan. Do remember, 一生流放，一生流放，一生流放 Okay.、Uh, as you can see, we are now stepping up a little bit more and. You need to take a look at the view against the Qu Yuan Memorial Hall. It's really magnificent. What you are watching is the Three Gorges. 后面呢就是三峡工程啊 ，the Three Gorges project, 三峡工程 And against the water, there is this mountain, and the view is magnificent. And I was told by、um, Miss Fu here. Miss Fu told me they chose this place. Specifically, because it is the best location, and we all believe Xu Yuan deserved the best location we can get for him. Okay, so if you guys have any questions, let me know. And in the same time, if you are watching from Sir I Learn Chinese Facebook page, YouTube channel, as well as Yingyu Huanqiu Guangbo Weibo, you are welcome to let me know. Let me know in the comment area where are you watching this. And no matter where you are, we can answer your questions and read your comments. So right now, let me check out the comments on Yingyu Huanqiu Guangbo. We look at it. 英语环球广播的留言。All right, <laughs> we have I Cody saying, 牛牛又去旅游啦。We are traveling again. Yes, I am taking you to beautiful places around the country. But I have to say, Hubei is hot. Hubei 好热啊，紫薇非常热。Um, the funny thing about temperature is that if you are born in one place, born and raised, you would be more customized or more. Um, let's say, 
comfortable with the weather, the condition there. And if you move to another, other places, even though according to the forecast of weather, it's only 35 degrees Celsius or something, actually I feel like it's even hotter than perhaps 37 degrees in Beijing. So it's really hot. So let me know what is the condition in your place. Let me know what is the weather in your place. 当地天气真好 from 也不尽然 Yes, it's though it's hot in temperature, it's actually ridiculously beautiful. Against the three gorges and um, um, along the mountain, it's. Totally magnificent. So thank you, thank you for all these lovely messages from English 环球广播 Let's see if there are any other ones from our、uh, YouTube channel. So if there's any from our YouTube channel, yes,、uh, we have Han Dojo watching from Indonesia. Happy to see you, and we have. Jake saying good timing. <laughs> okay, happy to have you here. And we have J Tubing saying, oh J Tubing, huh?、Uh, I really appreciate this channel. Thank you, thank you very much.、Um, thank you guys for being with us. And.、Um, We already talked about the major labels of Qu Yuan, him being exiled and being slandered by his fellow corruptive officials, being exiled and banished from the capital, and he lived in exile for around 20 years, which is a really long time. And here in this picture, it showcases his two experiences of exile. 这里呢是他流放的路线图。流放的路线图 So as you can see, the lines suggest the places. So he was banished from the capital and started to go to these different places: one to the north and one to the east. To the east. Okay, let's continue to move.、Um, actually, for Qu Yuan,、uh, he loved his country dearly. And some people say that he's got this. In Chinese, we say 愚忠愚 is 愚蠢 stupidity, and 忠 is 忠诚 loyalty. So 愚忠 would mean that he's not being very smart when he is being loyal, because people say he's you know loyal to the、um, royal family, and that is not the right thing to do. You're supposed to be loyal to the people, to the country, to the state, instead of to the royal family. But that is not exactly. Exactly the case, because for Qu Yuan, he was actually born in the royal family. So his love for the state, for the royal、um, court, for the family, was actually born what he was born with. Because well, he is the master of the state. He is the master of the country. So for him. Loving the country is as natural as possible. It's something he was born with. So ta, that's why we say he's got this patriotism,、um, being this patriotic poet. And now we can see these are some pictures of the、uh, seven states, seven prominent states during the spring and autumn, as well as warring states period of time, in this exhibition hall. Uh, our blue T-shirt, glasses, sunglasses, profile photo friend is saying, "Wow! Oh, Cis Niu Niu is a、uh, Northerner. Yes, I am Northerner. I'm a Northerner. I'm a Northerner. I'm a Northerner. I am a Northerner. You're right.、Uh, oh, see, this is、um, a picture showcasing the state of Chu because." 楚国 Even though we say the state of Chu or Chu country in Chinese, actually it's also it's just a 诸侯国诸侯国 means a secondary level. Their states, not exactly countries, but during Chu Yuan's period of time, the so-called emperor or the ruler of the entire area of all seven states have literal well no literal powers. It's more of a figurative title. And that is why for Qu Yuan, the royal family of the Chu states are his, let's say, his family and what his loyalty is for. So that's why we say for Qu Yuan, he was not being stupid or being stubborn about being loyal. He has to do that because it's his country all along. It's his states. It's 
for him, it's his people he needs to protect. Um, Jesse saying, I am still here, Niu Niu. I'm just uh, reposting the words given to Niu Niu Chinese. Oh, that's very sweet of you. Thank you very much. And yeah, when we are learning about Qu Yuan, we can learn a lot interesting and beautiful expressions along the way. And like I said, for Qu Yuan, his love for his country is vast. And that is why when the country or when the court got full of I'll say not very nice people, corrupted officials, and when his emperor won't listen to him, won't follow his strategies, and even give him the title of a treason, he could not stand that. For him, the love for his country is so dearly, the love for his states is so important to him, and living in exile as well as living um, in the name of a treason is something he could not bear. But even under that circumstances, he has never stopped loving his state. He has never doubted the importance of trying to serve his country. And that is why he said, Lu man man qi xiu yuan xi, wu jiang shang xia er qiu suo. Lu man man means the road is still really long. Qi xiu yuan xi means if I want to cover the journey, the journey is still really far. And wu is an ancient way to say I. Wu jiang will shang xia, up and down, er qiu suo. And continue to search, continue to put in my effort. Wu jiang shang xia er qiu suo. Together it means on and on stretched my road, long it was and far. I would go high and go low in the search that I made. Lu man man qi xiu yuan xi, wu jiang shang xia er qiu suo. Um, not only is this sentence beautiful in its lyrics as well as the rhythm, we are still using it quite often in today's China. We are still citing this verse quite often. Lu man man qi xiu yuan xi, wu jiang shang xia er qiu suo. If you love something dearly, if you want to express your determination and your passion and your patience to the course you're after, you can use this sentence. Lu man man qi xiu yuan xi, wu jiang shang xia er qiu suo. Even if I have to go high and go low, search for it and try really hard, I will still continue to search and to, let's say, finish my conquest. Okay, that's another sentence. Uh, and oh yeah, here, this is Li Sao. Li Sao. Li Sao is the major work of Qu Yuan, the most significant and most famous one, Li Sao. It actually means uh, encountering sorrow or the lament, Li Sao. And if you are not that familiar with traditional Chinese words and expressions, it's okay, I am not either. So I didn't even, I don't think I even understand the surface of it. It's very uh, interesting and let's say the classics is very complicated but still if you are a little bit familiar with Chinese characters you might already pick out that Cao Zi Tou there is a Cao Zi Tou so Cao Zi Tou for example this would be Cao Zi Tou so that suggests grass and here in Li Sao in the lament the most important work of Qu Yuan you might pick on many Chinese characters with Cao Zi Tou, with the component, character component of grass, grass Cao. That is because of, remember, the Xiang Cao Mei Ren Yi Xiang. Xiang Cao would be the fragrant uh, herbs with good fragrance, Xiang Cao. And he mentioned different kinds of herbs in his work very often. So you can take a count and count how many characters are here are with the uh, component of Cao in Li Sao. 有很多草字头的字啊,因为香草美人对于屈原而言非常重要. Let's continue to move and to check out these different sculptures of Xu Yuan. These are different sculptures actually copied from different places in China. Because we know that Qu Yuan was born here in uh, Zigui County, Hubei Province, and then he moved on to the capital of Chu, we say Yingdu, 
呃，楚当时的首都，首都 capital， 首都是郢都，郢都。And he then was exiled to different places as well. And these sculptures are copied from different places that he has visited. He lived in. He had been officials as all these different sculptures. So they are.、Um, Let's say similar yet with small differences. Okay, let's see if you guys have any other questions. If so, let me know in the comment area. Let me know what you want to ask. Anything you are interested about Chu Yuan, about、uh, the state of Chu here. Showcases many artworks regarding the works of Chu Yuan or people's pictures and paintings about the stories of Chu Yuan or even the spirit. Remember, when Chinese people say spirit, we actually mean the、um, inner strength, mental strength of Chu Yuan. So all these different pictures. Ah, I saw the one that we mentioned here. This is the work that we mentioned. Lu Man Man Qi. 路漫漫其修远兮，吾将上下而求索。And this is actually a very famous saying, a very famous saying by different people、uh, around here. Ooh, Chairman Mao wrote that. Super impressive. Li Sao, Li Sao. Uh, take a deep breath. <laughs> You're always telling me to take a deep breath, because like I was saying,、uh, this is a mountain. I'm climbing the mountain and talking to you guys, and、um, it's a happy experience. Yet it does take a little bit of,、um, let's say, energy out of me. So I am. Out of breath a little bit. Oh, I see this one. Check out this one. This is fun because Qu Zi, Qu Zi. That is another honorary title for Qu Yuan. If you still recall, when we were visiting the、um, native place of Zhu Xi, Zhu Xi, a Song Dynasty scholar and a new Confucian,、um, a new Confucianist. Zhu Xi was also given the title of Zhu Zi by later generations because Zi in Chinese in Chinese culture is actually master. Zi 呢是大师的意思 So we would have Kong Zi, Confucius, Meng Zi, Mencius, and Sun Zi, Sun Zhu, the writer of the art of war, and、uh, for example,、uh, Lao Zi, the creator of Taoism. These people are all honorary as a Zi, and here Qu Yuan. Qu Yuan is also given the title of Qu Zi, which I have to mention. Actually, Qu Yuan's life、um, overlapped with, for example, Mencius as well as Zhuang Zi. These people have perhaps direct interaction with Qu Yuan as well. They are almost all living in the same era, and it is very possible that their lives have a connection. A connection would be overlap. So Qu Yuan and Meng Zi and Zhuang Zi, their lives are also connected. A little bit overlap. Okay, let's continue to move and、uh, let's see.、Um, oh, we have Jesse saying, "You're not in need of can oxygen, are you, Nunu?" <laughs> no, I need oxygen oxygen. No, I need a little bit rest, of course, but. I have to say, seeing my camera crew working so hard with the heavy, heavy cameras, I feel like I'm super energetic because I need to communicate with you guys because all the effort we're making is to make sure you are enjoying the live stream, having fun and learning a little bit of something. Uh huh. Uh, 喜欢杨步森宋 is that your favorite dynasty? If so, let me know. And if you guys have any questions, you are watching a live stream with CRI Learn Chinese Facebook page, YouTube channel, and、uh, 英语环球广播微博 We are now talking about Qu Yuan, China's patriotic poet living in the Warring States period of time. And here we are in another exhibition hall with all these lovely stories about Qu Yuan. First and foremost, I saw a Jing Zhao Mian Jing. Zhao means to let's say、uh, look into, and Mian is your face. 
井 is a well. So what is this well for? 照面井。我们来问一下傅老师，照面井的故事是什么样的 ？Let's invite Miss Fu. 你好，你好，你好，你好。我看到这边有个照面井，它是什么意思啊？照面镜就是传说中屈原小时候经常梳镜子啊、照头、呃梳头洗脸的一个地方。而且传说中现在的那个照面镜呢，它不仅可以照面了，而且还可以照心。然后就是心底善良的话，就会越照越漂亮；如果心底丑陋的话，就会越照越丑的。Wow, I have to, I have to go look into it. Okay, so、uh, according to legends, the 照面镜 is actually served as a mirror, a well served as a mirror. And legend has it because 2,000 years ago there was no glasses in ancient China. There was no,、um, let's say. Mirror or a copper mirror, perhaps not even a copper mirror. So for Qu Yuan, one he has to look into a mirror and、um, arrange his appearance. He would look into this well. So we call it Zhao Mian Jing. And because local people love Qu Yuan so much, they say that nowadays Zhao Mian Jing, because of the strength and the spirit of Qu Yuan, it can not only show you the reflection of your face, but also your heart. 不仅能照面还能照心，照面 would be show the reflection of your face, and 照心 show the reflection of your heart. So if you look into the mirror, into the well, if you are a decent person, 是香草美人的话 a decent person with good virtues, then you would be prettier and prettier. Uh, because of the power of the well, but if you have some bad ideas in your heart, if you're not a good person, if you look into this well, you're gonna get a little bit more ugly every day. And that is Zhao Mianjing's story, the folk tale of Zhao Mianjing. Very interesting. I don't necessarily believe it's entirely true, but I think it shows the power of Qu Yuan in today's. World in today's China, for Chinese people nowadays, Qu Yuan 仍然是一个非常有影响力，甚至于是有很大的魔力的人。Uh, right here we see Ling Niu, Ling Niu, a magical cow, a magical ox. So Ling Niu 的故事又是怎样的呢？我们来找一找傅老师，傅老师来给我们讲一下吧。所以灵牛的故事是在讲什么呀？灵牛说起来就特别的神奇了。这个灵牛呢，就是在屈原的诞生地叫乐平里，它那个地方的耕牛不要那个牛鼻头上的那个用来转弯的绳子，就可以来回的自由耕田。而且那个村子的牛出来到其他地方去了以后，用不上三天就必须要用上那个绳子以后才能耕田。但是其他地方的牛进了他的村子以后，也照样的。不用三天就不要那个绳子，就可以来回的自由耕田。那到了今天也还是这样吗？到今天仍然是这个样子的。传说是屈原小时候读书，战国时期的书都是用竹简呢，用绳子一耕一耕的串起来的。所以当时他去京城做官的时候，这根串竹简的绳子就突然间断了。那么当地的旁边的一个老爷爷正在耕田，就把他那个呃耕田的牛的鼻子身上的那个绳子解下来。用作了屈原捆书的绳子，以后传说就是心有灵犀，一点通的缘故。啊<笑>、哦，好有趣的故事。OK， let me explain to you this fun folk tale. Uh, legend has it that when Qu Yuan was reading and carrying all his books, which are actually bamboo slips, if you recall, around 2,000 years ago, maybe no paper at that time, so he has to write on the bamboo slit and use a A rope to tie all the slips to tie off all his books. And one day, his books, the rope on the slip was broken. All of a sudden, everything got down. And for him, that he it would be hard for him to collect all the books. So local, a local shepherd, a farmer, used the little rope he was using to tie on the nose of the ox to help. Qu Yuan tie up his rope, and after that, till this day, for the 
ox for the oxen living in Qu Yuan's hometown. They did not need a rope on their noses to direct them when they are working in the field. All the other oxen, as long as you are in that area, if the oxen was carried to the area of Qu Yuan's hometown, they do not need that rope anymore. But if they're out of that specific village or area, they still need the rope. So. Something magical? I'm not really sure. And you can remember bees. Bees would be a nose. Bees, nyo bees would be the nose of that ox or cow. You tie a rope on their nose to help them with the direction. And here, this showcases a little. Uh, Shan Dong, we say Shan Dong. Shan Dong is a mountain hole. Mountain hole. Shan Dong. Because in ancient time there was no light, no electricity. Qu Yuan has to go inside a mountain hole so that he can get some moonlight. With the beautiful moonlight, he can continue to read. So he was this hardworking student. And people in this area, local people, still say that they can still hear the chanting. The Voice of Qu Yuan reading the books in that hall. That is why they're calling it 读书洞读书洞读书 is read books or reading. 读书读书读书洞 would be a hall. 山洞山洞读书洞 All right, let's continue to move. 景外景 equals to well. I'm not really sure, but it is ah, it is not.、Um, I I I am imagining with the two horizontal lines and the two vertical lines.、Um, You get the shape of a well, possibly. 可能是两根横线和竖线圈出了井的形状吗 Not really sure, but yes, 井 well. 鼻子，嗯哼，鼻子 would be nose. 鼻子 Here we've got all these pictures of、um, Longzhou Sai. If you have watched the live stream of previous days, you might already know that Dragon Boat Festival now is a festival commemorating Qu Yuan and the Dragon Boat Race, as well as sticky rice dumplings. All have something to do with Qu Yuan as well. So Qu Yuan is this very important figure. Okay, let's see if there are any other questions you have in the comment area. If so, let me know. And、uh, no matter if you're watching from English 环球广播微博 or from Sir I Learn Chinese Facebook page YouTube channel, it's you're all very welcome to leave your comments. And、um, let me see what are some comments we have here on YouTube. A true patriotic, indeed. Yes, he is a patriotic man. Actually, for him,、um, he has said that directly in the lament, which is a little bit like a biography or a biography kind of poem. That is the most important and famous po、uh, poet wrote. Excuse me, poem. Poem wrote by Qu Yuan, and in it there is this very important sentence: 意于心之所善兮，虽九死其犹未悔 It、um, roughly can be roughly translated as for what for the ideal that my heart is dear to, I can. I won't regret a thousand deaths to die. 意于心之所善兮，虽九死其犹未悔 You can listen to that. That is、uh, Li Sao, the lament being chanted. Oh, that's Qu Yuan's work, and that is why he's been called as. 师祖，师祖 ，the father of poems, the father of poems， 师祖。Let's take a look here. So, like I said, 意于心之所善兮，于 is I, 心 means heart, and 善 is good or regard as good. So, 意于心之所善兮 means for the things that my heart considers as good, as 
an ideal as what my heart actually works for. And uh, Sui Jiu Si, Jiu is nine, Si is death or die. Jiu Si actually, many people believe it means many deaths. Qi Yu Wei Hui, I won't regret. So this means that for the things that my heart truly desires, I won't regret even a thousand deaths to die. This is a sentence that's been quoted by Chinese President Xi Jinping in 2018. He was talking about some top scientists here in China, and for the scientists, they are looking for the scientific results. They hope to advance science achievements here in China. And for them, it is truly Like I said, these words are still quite often cited by modern day Chinese people. So if you have the courage and patience to learn about Qi Yuan, learn about Qi Yuan's words, your Chinese is going to be better than mine. So yes, here's the challenge. Go learn the lament. If you can figure that out, Chinese would be super easy for you. And here we are at the um, main hall, Zheng Dian, main hall of the Qi Yuan Memorial Hall. And you can see this beautiful picture painted on the wall showcasing the final days of Qi Yuan's life. Living in exile for around 20 years, Qu Yuan learned that the capital of the state of Chu was captured by the invading Qin forces. For him, that is the burst of the final hope of bubble he had to um, help the state of Chu to become the king, to become the, let's say, master of that area, to be the one that finally unifies all the other States. So with his beloved country out of the world and with his beloved country not existing anymore, for him he has no reason to live anymore. And there is actually a poem um, recording that moment. It is said that Qu Yuan was wandering around in the side of the Milu River and he met this fisherman. He told the fisherman that so, actually means the entire world is corrupted and contaminated. I am the only one that's clear. Everyone else is drunk. I am the only one that's sober. And the fisherman was wondering, so in this case, how come you are not immersed by these people, influenced by these people? You have all these talent, you don't really have to stay in the state of Chu. You can certainly move on to other states and the empress and the lord of other states would welcome you. Since you've got all these talent, you should totally go and uh, just don't be sober, be drunk yourself and accept what the world is. But Qu Yuan said, I could not do that. People say, if you take a bath, you do not want your clothes to be dirty. Since I am now clear, I cannot stand being dirty or being contaminated. And that's when Qu Yuan decided to kill himself in the Milu River. Because without his beloved country, there is no purpose of him living in the world anymore. So that is the ending, the really not happy ending of Qu Yuan's story. But we can see that through Qu Yuan's entire life, he has been this decent, clear, incorrupted man, and he's always faithful to his dream and to his goal, and he's always faithful, loyal to his country and to his ideal, which is why people love him so very much. They try to retrieve his body on a dragon boat, while well, previously it was just a boat, and they try to throw rice dumplings in the river to distract the fish from eating his body. And people's love to Qu Yuan lasts till this very day. We're still paying our tribute to him, paying our respect to him, and we're still citing and quoting many of his sentences because he is now not only a patriotic poet but a symbol of Chinese culture, a true icon of civilization. That's how important we believe Qu Yuan is. Right here we can see the sculpture of Qu Yuan. He doesn't look very happy but he's 
definitely a serious, um, being very important man with all these works left behind him. All right, so that is what I have here for you today. Hopefully, with all these content, you've grasped the essence of Qu Yuan, remembered the label we got for you. We have Yi Sheng Liu Fang showcasing his sorrow, the hardships in his life. We have Shi Ren, that is his title or he's a very important label on him, Shi Ren, poet, Shi Ren, and also Lang Man, romantic, because of his Xiang Cao Mei Ren Yi Xiang, and most importantly, Ai Guo Zhe, Ai Guo Zhe, he's a true patriot, a patriotic poet, Qu Yuan. If you like the story, please let me know in the comment area, and if you like the live stream, um, you can share our live stream as well. And that concludes our tour here in the Memorial Hall of Qu Yuan. Hopefully after today's live stream, you learn a little bit more about the Chinese language and Chinese culture. Thanks for watching this episode of Old Wisdom, New Insights. We'll see you next time in the live stream. Thank you guys very much. Bye-bye.